Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Greenville. We're delighted to have you here. Welcome to our Next Is Now Partner Conference for 2012. What a great time we had last night. I got a chance to reconnect with old friends, meet a lot of new friends, ran out of time, had to get ready for today, but I hope you guys had a great time last night at our party. Was it good? Everybody enjoy it? We have got an exciting couple of days planned for you, so I hope you're ready. We're going to ask you to pay attention, hopefully learn a couple of things, take some things back with you to your companies, and help us both execute together. We're joined here in Greenville today by many of our 1,600 employees via video conference, as you can see, worldwide, to also welcome you and for them to also listen in on our general session comments, because we've got some news that we're talking about today. We're honored to have our very best customers from North America. This is the select group. This is the 1% for ScanSource, I can tell you. We have 30,000 customers worldwide. There are 300 here today. We also have a group of our best customers from Europe and Latin America also joining us in this, our North America conference. Plus, we have the best manufacturers of hardware, software, and services, and they're all here today as well. And we thank them for their sponsorship of this conference. Let's give them a round of applause. So why are we here together? This is unusual. As a matter of fact, it's, we've done it one other time. It wasn't quite like this, where we had all of our business units in North America combined for a partner conference. This, com this is a combination of our POS and barcoding unit, our Catalyst Telecom unit, ScanSource Communications, and ScanSource Security. This year, we decided to bring everybody into one event here in Greenville, partly because it's our 20th year anniversary, but we're also feeling like there's changes that affect all of our business units, all of our partners, all of our vendors. So it's a unique opportunity to bring together our smartest, our brightest, our most successful partners and create a unique environment for education, discussion, and networking. So that's what this is all about. We think the possibilities are exciting and they're endless whenever you can assemble this group of highly successful entrepreneurs and leaders like we have here today. So we have a general session this morning followed by a technology and solution expo this afternoon that should provide some new ideas and strategies to help all of you prosper and grow in the future. Tomorrow, each of our business units has a dedicated track specific to your business and what your interests are. And in between, we hope to talk to you, feed you, and entertain you as well. So again, welcome to Greenville. This is our hometown. It's our 20th year anniversary, so we thought we would bring you here. Some of you have never been to Greenville. You probably didn't know where Greenville, South Carolina was, since there's Greenville's in every state. Uh, one time I was traveling on a plane to Greenville from somewhere else, and I landed with a couple who was going to Greenville, North Carolina, which is eight hours from here by car. So this is a place that's not always easy to get to, but we're thrilled that, that you were able to, to make the trip. It's our headquarters town, and we wanted to share what we think is our southern hospitality with you. This enables us to bring more of our employees into this session. You saw some of them by video conference and many, many of them here. You'll see over the next two days almost all of the 500 employees in Greenville here represented. We're proud of Greenville. As you saw last night, we're still growing. We've got construction going on in hotels and in buildings. So this is one of those small, vibrant areas in the country that's still doing quite well. And we're excited to have you joining us here. We even have our very own fitness trail called the Swamp Rabbit. For those of you who are ready, tomorrow morning at 6.15 a.m., we're going for a run. So you guys join me outside for that. But tonight, we're going to entertain you with South Carolina's own Darius Rucker. And uh, hopefully you'll have a great time here in Darius. And we've got other activities over the next few days as well. As you saw when I walked out, we're also using this event to unveil a new ScanSource logo. This is something that uh, we have not shown to anyone. This is a, a group of about 12 or 15 people in the whole company knew that we were going to do a new logo today. And so that was a little challenging for us is, number one, I have my board of directors here and they haven't seen it. So this will be an interesting test to see if I'm around tonight, okay guys? Um, uh, but after 20 years, we decided that it was time to refresh our logo, still the same name, it's even got the same colors, but have it communicate ScanSource Now and ScanSource Next. Because after 20 years, we've all changed. Our industries have changed, our businesses have changed, the requirements to be competitive have changed. So our company has too. We've grown, we've evolved, but we remain, remain true to our ideals of making sure that 
the channel is prosperous and successful long term. We believe the new logo connotates a better service orientation. As a matter of fact, the original logo was something that uh, we didn't spend much money on, but it survived a long time because it set the stage for where we are today. This one, using more lowercase letters, we think is less bossy, more service-oriented, and the boxes on the left kind of reflect that we're flexible and open. Not everybody who sees the box really understands what it is, and that's okay. This is about ScanSource has ideas and solutions and opportunities for everyone, and we're not afraid because we want to be prepared to move forward as things change, and we're not afraid of that. So that's our future, and this is part of that. So what do you guys think about our new logo? Okay. Again, we'll see if I'm here tonight at the concert. Um, so let's go to the ScanSource story. Our story started in 1992 here in Greenville. Six of us, um, there's a guy named Steve Owings who's still with us today. Many of you guys know him, he's on our board. Steve had vision and he had money. And so he's the kind of guy you wanna partner with. Many of you have started your companies. Many of you have, have had very successful runs for 20 years. We've got customers from those very early days still with ScanSource today. Some of them have changed their names, um, but companies like Abe Tech are still here, American Barcode, Mintech, Winco. So many of the companies that helped us with this idea of will a distributor really be necessary for barcode products in 1992 when lots of people had tried it and were not so successful, we decided that if we did two things that we learned from the computer distribution industry, which was sell only to resellers, meaning no end users. That was our first marketing pitch. It was easy to come up with. And number two, have product when you want it. So with those two things, it's kind of starting, it's a starting point, but it's not always what it takes to win long term. So we learned there were other things we had to do. We decided to get into other products over time. We joined our barcoding product family with another group of products, point of sale products, cash registers and products like that. And by the way, over 20 years, we've made 20 small acquisitions. I say small because they were important to ScanSource. They were big to the companies that we acquired. But our story is less about buying revenues as it is about finding people who can help us grow. Customers that came from the Alpha Data acquisition in 93 were New Roll and Nebraska Book. They're still with us today. We still have some of those original employees with us today. Sue Chalmers, Sandy Wanamaker, Phyllis Gustin. And back to when we started, we still have that same team of six people still with us. So Steve and I, Greg Dixon, who you'll hear about in a few minutes, he's going to talk about uh, some of the trends affecting our business together. And our two original sales reps, Janet Rollins and Sherry Huffman, still with us today. Many of you know them for many, many years. And then the one that most of you didn't know, unless you owed us money, was Leah Gangloff. She was our accountant, still with us today. And this was the team that decided to take a chance and really invest in the channel and trust that long term we'd have a business that made some sense. We went public in 94, which was very early for a company. We could talk about why we probably would not want to do it today, but we did back then. It gave us significant credibility in the market. And the bottom line is our business is only as good as and strong as yours. So we have to make sure that we can have the right inventory and give you the amount of trade credit you need to be successful if you're a reseller in the business long term. So it helped us finance our growth. We quickly grew to 100 million in revenues, and most of you know this story, but a, a key point that happened here too was in early 96, late, late 96, we started a group called the PSG. The idea was once we got past not selling to end users and keeping product in stock, the rest of the story was, well, how do you really add value? Because those first two things are kind of like what every computer distributor does, what's next? What's next for us back then? was trying to help resellers get into the emerging RF data collection business. That's what it was called back then, RFDC, way before it was called Wi-Fi. And what happened was a lot of our customers wanted to sell these emerging products, but the manufacturers, rightly so, said we're not prepared to help educate, train, and support this group of resellers around the country. So Scanser stepped in and we created a team that would supplement our partners. And that was the start of our services offerings that were available to customers who needed them, but you didn't have to pay for them unless you used them, which is, again, has always been part of the secret, I think, to the ScanSource story is if you're a large, very successful reseller, VAR integrator, and you don't need all of our services, it's okay. Catalyst Telecom, this company, this part of our business, which is vital today, 
was because Steve and I and the other members of our original team said, can we be in other markets other than barcode? And we decided we could, but it would have to come at a certain point in time. This was the time that we saw opportunity and we convinced at the time one of the largest manufacturers in the PBX world then, Lucent Technologies, to take a chance on this little company called ScanSource, who didn't know anything about phone systems but was in Greenville, South Carolina. So again, we took a chance, we started a company, created a team, and a lot of success from there. Matter of fact, some of those early customers, Primeline, CTI, Southtel, those companies are still with us today. They're still around. So we decided to partner very closely with our early customers and hopefully grow with them over time. We also got into another part of this, the computer telepathy business at the time, acquiring a small company called CTI Authority up in New Jersey, where Brian Cuppet and Mike Fernie came from and Gene Rivera. Again, employees that have stayed with us throughout the growth of our company, which we're real proud of. So to finish the story out, we decided that over time, where else could we grow? And our vendors, our manufacturers asked us, hey, we like what you're doing in North America. Do you think it'll work in Europe? Do you think it'll work in Latin America? And after a lot of discussions and making sure that all the same characteristics of the relationships, meaning the relationships between manufacturer, distributor, and reseller would be intact, we decided to explore those opportunities. So we bought a small company in Miami, NetPoint International. Again, the principal still with us today, Elias Boatball. We then launched our expansion further from there and we opened in Europe. So we became, in those years of 2002, 2003, Scansers became much more of an international company from a strategic standpoint. Still today, one of the places that we're still seeing significant growth. We continued to grow and Scansers Communications came on the scene. Of course, it wasn't called that back then. Some of you may remember it as Paracon. So that was one of those names that we changed over time and it became the genesis for Scansers Communications which helped us continue to grow. And along the way, by the way, I put these numbers up, not to brag, but just to show you that these things happen, not because we had a goal to be a billion dollar company, but it happened because our partners, whether you're a vendor or a reseller, helped us get there, and our company kept growing. We were able to take market share, we were able to take advantage of manufacturers and resellers trusting us, and it kept our company growing, and we felt comfortable enough that we could go into a third technology, and that became Scanser Security in 2004. So eight years later, it's still our fastest growing technology area and one that we're investing in. But since then, since that uh, security startup, where it made sense, our companies continue to invest. I wanted to share with you that we have the idea that we don't always know what, that if what we're doing is perfect or if it's working well, so we have to always challenge ourselves. And we need you to tell us when something else is better. This was a great example. There was a company in Kansas City, T2 Supply, who frankly was kicking our butt in selling video conferencing. They were much better than we were, and we didn't really know who they were until we had a chance to meet them, and we were so impressed, and that was probably one of the best acquisitions we made from the culture fit. Kansas City and Greenville could be the same town as far as I'm concerned. People had the same values, and we loved that team there. They're all still with us today. So as you can see, the story kept growing. We went through $2 billion in revenue, and then we started saying, hey, we need to expand for growth. We we uh, leased more space in uh, South Haven, Mississippi, which is right next to Memphis, Tennessee. Much bigger warehouse. Um, and then things kind of, we decided to go ahead and exp uh, expand into Europe. And then things happened that we weren't planning for. This chart that has been up and to the right for many, many years took a little hiatus, like everybody's business did. We had just gotten into the Europe communications business buying this company, MTV. We also bought a company in Cologne, Germany, Algal Europe, because we felt before 2000, the, the recession of 08 and 09, that our business fundamentals, like the U.S., would be the same in Europe in communications. So that's why we did it. Certainly, we had a challenging time like everybody did. And then a couple years after that, we actually have gotten back on the growth path. We made our last acquisition a year ago, entering the, the markets of Brazil with uh, the acquisition of CDC Brazil, and those principles are with us here at the conference too. So if you get a chance, and if you have any questions about the Brazilian market, these are things other than the Olympics and the World Cup coming, these guys can talk to you about that. So that's kind of the story for Scansers. We just ended our year at over, a little over $3 billion, and so I wanna thank everybody in this room for helping us get there. Without our partners, it wouldn't happen. So Scansers, let's give them a round of applause. So, so that's kind of the scan source story. 
Um, there's a strategy behind it, and there's a scan source difference that we think is really the secret sauce that I'll talk about. The strategy everybody knows about, it's starting to change a little bit. We focused on technologies, and I was having a conversation with an executive this morning from one of our vendors about, hey, is that still the right way to organize? So we're, we're constantly saying, hey, is, are these the areas that we need to be making our investments? You know, where should we, as a distributor, make our bets? And we need to know from you, our resellers, you know, where do you see the growth coming? Where do you see your opportunity? But today, this is how we're organized. We believe that ScanSource is unique among other distributors by organizing our business so focused on the technologies, so focused by business unit, that we can have a dedicated team of experts. And we believe that gives you, our customers, better service, that we're focused, that we care about your business, that we don't have the physical security guys counting on getting revenues from the POS and barcode guys. These groups of people are truly experts at what they do. And we've learned over time that the benefits for you, and again, whether you're a reseller or a vendor, are pretty significant. We like the fact that we have a separate president of these teams. We have separate salespeople. We have separate tech support people, separate product management teams. So we believe this, this focus on the products and the vendors and the technologies and the markets is something that makes ScanSource pretty unique. No one else is organized this way. Sometimes it scares me. It's like maybe we're wrong and they're all right. But so far, it seems to have worked for us. But this is an area that we would love your feedback. Because at the bottom line, if we're not driving better service for you than any other distributor out there, then we need to change that. We need to improve that. We think these benefits are important, but you have to tell us. You generally vote with your pocketbook. You generally tell us by market share whether we're doing good or not so good. We know you like us because we're Southern, but we also know that you have choices. And we know that these things are the important aspects of why you choose a partner. And we want to be the one that's at the top of your list every time. So this business unit focus, so we've got four business units here in North America. We're a little different internationally, I'll show you that in a minute. They're targeting all of the emerging products, technologies, vendors, strategies, markets underneath their business unit. What's also interesting is that we've got this great focus, but we know there are some things that we have to be operationally excellent no matter which business unit you're doing business with at ScanSource. So we've got a team of people that, have a, that we call our shared services team. And that includes folks in our warehouse, in our finance and accounting, in some of our marketing programs. An event like this, we couldn't do with just the team assigned to ScanSource POS and barcoding. It takes a larger team of people, and we believe that with this shared services approach, we are operationally, we believe, as excellent as our competitors. You have to tell us that. But we believe, again, this is a way for us to not only give you great service, but also deliver to you the lowest possible cost to deliver that service. Because that's part of our strategy. If we can't convince you that we're good because you like us, we got to show you that our services are great and our prices are fair. If we're not doing that, then we don't need to earn your business. We understand that. You have choices. So this has been the ScanSource story. Up and to the right, lots of activity. Keeps me busy, keeps all of our team members busy, all 1,600. So the question and part of the story today is kind of what's next? And this is not a chart I gave to our board, so this is just somebody's imagination about what it could be. There are no numbers and there are no timelines, okay? So do not publish this anywhere. But this is possibly what could happen. So what are the things that we need to do as a company at ScanSource to really pay off this whole idea of the next is now? That's really why we're here this morning. That's why I got a few minutes to talk to you about what we're doing as a company, you know, what do we see that ScanSource needs to do differently to help your business grow? We've made a lot of changes this year. We have a lot of new leaders running our business units, a lot of new executives. We believe that moving people around sometimes is good, just to move people around sometimes. We also believe that we need people who can challenge us, who can challenge the current status quo, who can help develop our younger people, our younger employees, develop the managers of the future. All of this, all of this is only possible if you, as our partners, believe that we're providing you more value. These partners in the room, you partners, are the way we can grow. As I said earlier, we have a select group here. This is a group that drives a significant amount of revenue for our company. We need you to prosper. Prosper is your definition. It could be 5% growth, 
or no growth but make more money whatever the definition for your company we're okay with we just want to make sure that we can fit in there somehow fill a need fill a void so that you feel like we're investing with you for success we don't sell products to retailers to end customers to anybody other than a reseller so our our success is highly dependent upon you in this room you know that we're loyal we said back in 1992 we're not going to go to the end users and sell around you we don't do it today we believe that strategy is still the strategy for the future for our company over the years we've developed a lot of tools and programs and offerings because again we're trying to say we call ourselves a value-added distributor that means more than pick pack and ship boxes more than providing you a tray credit line more than answering the telephone when you have an order we have tried to find ways to fill voids where we can provide scale and efficiency I mentioned our original plan we had this partner services PSG group way back in 96 to provide RFDC support for resellers who weren't certified and couldn't sell it we have done all these other things since then we've got a custom configuration center in our South Haven facility here we have something similar by the way in our warehouse in Brussels so we believe that some of the services that you do today or that you don't do but need someone to do we can do for you either better lower cost or a combination of both so these programs whether it's app source which is our mobility application store for partners or sumo which we're relaunching version 2 at the conference today which allows our partners to find each other if you've got an offer and you think another partner could use or leverage or if you need a service or a niche product go to sumopartner.com and see if you can find it we're trying to do what you can find at a conference things that I heard last night is Mike I just met this guy over here who can sell me this and I've been looking for someone to do that and we have been talking about that happens at every conference like this this is the power of putting this kind of groups of people together is you find people who can help your business grow and if we can do that somehow in an automated way that works for you 24 7 that's the idea for sumo the rest of these whether it's our OUI managed services which came out of our Avaya legacy at providing training and support marketing programs for partners to help you market to end users all of these are offerings that we have had over the years and they've been in different places in our company so today we're announcing a new scan source business unit that puts them all together and it's called the scan source services group this is our newest business unit it's designed to work across all of our business units in North America it potentially is the template we'll use in Europe and Latin America but today this group actually already exists it's a group of people over 30 that we're putting together headed up by a president like our other business units Mike Burns is leading this and this team will be at the Technology Expo today and you'll be able to learn more about what it is that they're doing today there's a lot of things that I had on the chart they're doing today there's also things that we think they can do in the future so I really view putting this team together as a, making a platform for the future development and by the way we're okay if we lose some services and add new ones we're okay with that it may not be that every service we have you'll ever use it may not be that any of them you'll ever use so rest easy if you're a very successful large partner who doesn't need any scan source services we don't charge you for them unless you use them okay it's not built into your price of acquisition of hardware these are a la carte offerings that allows you to find a place to where scan source can help so we believe that with the shared resources and critical mass concept you may use us sometimes when you have peak demand and you may use us other times and not do not make an investment into the future so what are we doing internationally I've talked about our growth strategies we've got the new business unit international is still fairly new for our company represents about 25 percent of our revenues some of you in this room have tried to work with us to sell products outside of North America it's not easy no matter what they say it doesn't work as easy as everyone wants it to work there is no one price for any country any time tomorrow it doesn't work that way we're organized like our vendors are like our customers are which is principally we're where they are so we started our business there as I said earlier we're in the barcode and POS business in Europe and in Latin America we're in the communication business still early days in Europe we're still early days in Latin America we're not in our physical security business except a small amount out of our Miami office today in Latin America 
nothing in Europe in physical security. So our company is still looking for growth opportunities in those markets with those technologies over time. We've got a pretty good track record so far. Um, we've certainly had our challenges like everyone else has, but this part of our business continues to grow and I'm sharing it with you so you can see these are some of the things that we see as opportunities that may help your business. Certainly with our vendors, they've sat down with us and asked us can we help them in these markets. The reason that we have been as successful as we are is that we've got a team that's highly motivated, they're, they're allowed to make the decisions in their countries, they're not driven by Greenville, South Carolina. So we've got an experienced team, we've got the right balance sheet to support them, the right financial controls. So we believe that long term that's another place that Scansters will continue to grow over time. But hang on, are there other technologies out there that we're looking at? The answer would be yes, yes. We have our plate full though, just so we're all clear, we've got lots to worry about. But we're always looking at what is next, you know, what's going to happen either in the technologies we're in or is there something adjacent or something radically different. These key concepts were the reasons that we started the company, the reasons that we were successful in the early days in the markets we chose. Clearly these are some trends that help our business grow, especially if you're in the channel. If product sales start moving from direct to indirect, that helps all of us in this room. If products start moving from proprietary focused single vendor solutions to open multi vendor solutions, that helps the channel grow. So anything that helps the channel grow are things that we want to look for. And right now, we believe there's some other places that we could grow even within our existing, our existing businesses. So when we look at that today, we've got some big trends that we think are affecting our industry. Um, I'm going to have Greg Dixon, he'll be on here in a few minutes after I'm finished, and he's going to talk about these in more detail. But let me just kind of just identify what we believe these four key trends are. And these are not because we have a research team that goes out and does this. This is from us talking to you, our resellers and our vendors, about what's on your mind, where are opportunities, where should we invest, do we need any new vendors, do we need any new products, what do you think? So BYOD, everybody gets that one, bring your own device. I think at ScanSource, we have more devices than we have people. I think that's like any company these days, they're just proliferating. We provide some to our employees and they bring in two or three themselves. We all have smartphones and tablets and all kinds of devices that we want to connect and it's driving a huge growth in our sales through you of wireless infrastructure. All of a sudden lots and lots of companies are doing that. So, so we're benefiting and you are by this trend, this BYOD trend. Mobility clearly is probably the biggest story among all of our partners, whether you're in communications or security or POS or barcoding, communications, all of them, all of them have a mobility element today and what we're trying to identify is where can we again fill some gaps, where are the opportunities, how can we either educate, uh, train, support, create programs to take advantage of the mobility trend. And we think that our vendors and our partners are in the right place to take advantage of that. These last two things we've not talked about at ScanSource very much at all. Big data, which I didn't really know what that meant. Greg told me a little bit about it. I still don't get it. So many of you will hear it because Greg can take the extremely obvious to him and the incomprehensible to me and make it easy to understand. So that's coming. But just understand that everything we sell generates data pretty much. Whether it's voice, data, video, we're filling pipes and servers full of stuff, okay? So all of these end devices that you're reselling are driving and collecting data. And that's kind of where we started. We started in the, what was called the AIDC, the Automated Identification Data Collection Business. So we started in the data collection, but guess what? There's now all this data and what are people going to do with it? So Greg's going to try to demystify that some for you. And then finally this thing called M to M, machine to machine. This is the stuff that sometimes we don't even want to think about is the, the, where we have devices talking without us being in the middle of that. And so supposedly that's going to help uh, innovate change productivity, help all of us see opportunities to sell new products. Very early days, we've talked to some consultants about it. Again, we don't have a research department. The research department is Greg Dixon at ScanSource.com. So you guys can call Greg or email him and he will, he will find a way to tell you more about what he knows. But these are the things that we think are kind of cool and that we want to talk about. So finally, you know, what is it that is kind of the secret sauce or what's the scan source difference really? 
we're in these technologies, yeah, you know, and we're in these business units organized, yep, that's pretty interesting, but that's not that different to everybody. We think it's much easier than that to talk about. And so Scansor is different, I think was best said by our uh, Chairman Emeritus, uh, Mr. Jim Foodie. He was constantly being asked by employees, by investors, by his family, you know, what keeps you up at night, Jim? And he would always have the same answer. And the rest of our board members know this well, that if you knew the people at ScanSource, I can tell you I sleep at night. And that's really kind of the secret story of ScanSource. And hopefully, if you were here last night and you got a chance to meet your sales rep for the first time, or maybe even someone who is in product management, or maybe tonight you meet someone in our RFS department or customer service, this is kind of a different group of people. It's not just about Greenville because we got people in Kansas and in Brussels and in Miami and all of our other locations just like this. This is a company that we're proud of, and I'm trying to do this without bragging too much or saying we're special and look at us, but we've got an unusual group of people that care. This is a passionate group of people who know that we have to work hard, we have to make our customers and our vendors happy, but we also know how to enjoy ourselves, make sure we take some time out to do some things. Um, and some of that becomes we do some things in our communities. I mean, it's not just about doing it for ourselves. It's about wherever we are, whether it's in Memphis, Tennessee, whether it's in Cologne, Germany. Our employees are doing stuff all the time, and you are too as our partners. We've learned that, that you've told us that, hey, you want us to help you do some of these things. We've participated. Many of you for years have helped us. You guys have said, hey, is there something that we can do with some of your charitable efforts? We've had vendors for years send us money. They've sent us products to give to local school systems unasked. So I think there's an interesting group dynamic that happens here when you get people together, and frankly, people together who care about each other. It's not all about what's the lowest price. We've got a new idea for this year for our company that I want to share with you called 2030. This is our 20th year anniversary, and our idea was, hey, if each employee can give 20 hours of community service this year, we would put out 30,000 hours throughout our, our world presence. So we think that that's something that each one of you are already doing. Matter of fact, we asked you, and these are some of the other ideas we got. So uh, VistaCare Communications, they're working with uh, uh, Team Nova Scotia, and Mike MacArthur, one of their employees, heavily invests his time in helping out Special Olympics. Um, out of Herndon, Virginia, ABC. Um, these, these folks are supporting the family of a lost colleague by raising family money to support the daughter's education. Um, advanced AV out of Philadelphia. Um, supplied equipment, time, resources, and a free service contract to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I mean, these are just three examples of what everybody in our community of uh, partners does. And we're proud of that. And by the way, today is 9-11, and we knew as we scheduled this that that might be a challenging time for some people. We did something this year, again, we saw the need, it wasn't that uh, someone else couldn't do it, but we have a fire department literally uh, not even half a mile from our offices, and they were one of 1,000 fire departments in the country to get a, uh, a segment of the uh, remains of the Twin Towers, and they had this monument they'd been working on for two years, and they had no public money, it was all private money, they had a trailer out there with this, with this uh, piece of steel on for two years, raising money, and they were really close to that final day a few months ago to dedicate it, and they needed a little more help, and our team stepped up, saw the need, helped them out. John Gilliard and his daughter, Carolina, went over there, and it's just, a, it's just a, a neat experience when you can share what you believe about our country and about the tragic loss we had on 9-11. So I think what is so exciting about you know, our company and your company and our vendors is that we all share this passion to not only work hard and make money, and those are all cool things, but also to give back where it's appropriate. And so, anyway, I wanted to share some of that with you and, and tell you why I think that's different. So let me, let me wrap up. What else do we have coming up for you? We are investing always. We're trying to find places that we can fill gaps. We're announcing most of these programs this week. Most of them were announced yesterday and today. Some of them, some of you already knew about. Copilot is a new program from Catalyst, which is a proprietary configuration tool. It's one that we've been working on for a while to combine all the challenges it takes in a VIA partner to put together a quote. We believe no other distributor in the country has this tool today. 
Mobile ETC is brand new from ScanSource, POS, and barcoding. We believe it's a way to focus our mobility efforts around enabling, training, and connecting our partners. And with Polycom, we've launched the Polycom Demo Center. We're the only distributor in the country to have a full OTX uh, demonstration center in Lenexa, Kansas, which allows our resellers to bring their end users to do a demo. And so we made a big investment there. ScanSource POS has also invested in their payment services, payment solution suite. They just became ESO certified. We're doing key injections in South Haven, Missis uh, Mississippi. So if you know what key injections are, understand we can do that for you now. Then a program called SNAP. This is a program that our security team came up with. Again, we believe it's the industry's first web-based product selection tool. And we've been trying to fill the gaps between what vendors provide and what resellers do on spreadsheets and, and, and by the seat of their pants and provide tools over the years. We've always had a challenge ourselves to figure out how do we help a customer choose products. This is another example of, I think, an innovative product from ScanSource that will help our partners. And then finally, our RFS team, which is formerly, was formerly known as our credit department, so years ago we relabeled them, Reseller Financial Services, to help our resellers finance their business. We provide trade credit, as all of you know, and we wanted to make sure you understood that we've continued to invest even during challenging times. It's not always easy. Not every customer qualifies for as much trade credit this year as they did three years ago. We've seen all seen the charts that ScanSource went through. Many of you went through the same challenges. But just since the first part of this year, since January 1, we provided over $60 million in incremental trade credit financing this year. And over half of that went to the 300 partners in this room. So this is the group that we're investing with. We have today more credit availability in this room than you would imagine. We have $125 million of trade credit available in this room. So vendors, did you hear that? $125 million of credit line available. So we have provided the tool, we need to go utilize it. So, so we're proud of the fact that we can come up with some programs, but again, you have to tell us. You have to tell us if these are the ones that you need. And if they're not, what is it you're gonna need next? So that's kind of the ScanSource story. That's the ScanSource difference. We think it is about our people. I'm proud of every employee we have here and around the world. Proud of the fact that we're able to get so many of our partners to come to Greenville, South Carolina once. We may not do this one for a couple years, but we really want to show off where we're from, get you in front of more of our ScanSource employees so they can see why it's exciting to come to a conference. I always have a great time. I get to renew old acquaintances. Uh, last night I was busy. I think I got 20 feet inside the door. Love talking to everybody. I'll be around the next two days. But we've got an action-packed agenda for you this morning. You're going to hear from Greg Dixon. I've already stolen a little bit of his thunder, but I think there's plenty for Greg left to fill in the blanks with. He's a brilliant guy that, again, makes the obtuse uh, sound really easy, and that's good. We need one guy like that. We can't afford two, so Greg's our guy. Um, we've got some great speakers. Um, Joseph Jaffe is here to talk about Flip the Funnel. He's one of the leading experts on customer service, which we love to hear about. We can't talk enough about internally what we can do to better serve our customers. And, and I think his, one of his key takeaways should be, don't forget about your top customers. And you can even use them to track new ones. So that's kind of a cool way to think about that. And again, that's why you're here today. And then we're going to close out the general session with John Jacobs from Life is Good. Uh, John and his brother started the company. They've got a really cool, I, they had a really cool idea. It mirrors a lot of the scan source story, except they didn't go public. They were smarter than we were. Um, it's got a great parallel to a lot of the things that they believe in with their people and their communities. And so I think you guys will really enjoy hearing from John Jacobs. So with that, I'm finished. I want to say thank you again for all the business. I look forward to meeting the rest of you today as time permits. Please don't hesitate to call me, email me, and thank you very much.